So today we've got a Hoshizaki problem. It's up on a two beep safety limit. Defrost backup timer. Right inside here, in this back corner, it says alarm reset right there. We'll go ahead and reset that. Now I push the reset button and we're going to let the machine start its cycle over again and we're going to watch everything and see what happens. One thing I don't like. That's going in the red as far as water pressure goes. That's not good. What do you know? We're frozen up. We're going to go through our checklist and figure out what caused this to freeze up, but the water pressure already looks like a problem to me. That compressor. Might already be leaking. So we're gonna defrost this. So defrost it. We're gonna go ahead and put it into the queen, and then go ahead and turn the cleaning valve. So that way, what that does is that forces water from the water pump up into the water distribution hose. So you have a fresh water distribution line right here, and then you have a recirc line from the pump. So when I turn that, see this T going here, it forces the water. Normally the water sits there and stops. It's simply there for cleaning, but it'll help in the defrosting process. So we open it up, so now we're bringing water in on the water inlet rails too. Help the defrost this faster. And then I'm gonna grab a water hose, get some hot water in here, and help this process along. I wouldn't be surprised though if we break a cube guide because look at how much ice is coming down on that right now. That's a lot of weight pushing on that plastic cube guide. So this is just my method, the way that I like to do it. I feel like the water pump's helping me and I just put hot water into the ice bath down here and the water pump's helping me basically just circulate that hot water. So just how I roll with it. Some people choose to defrost it from the top. I've done that before too, so to each their own. As I'm doing this, that ice is going to be coming down. You don't want it to come down too fast. You want to do it nice and slow because you'll see it comes down and it hits that cube guy. That's a lot of weight. So I'm just trying to do it, you know, a little bit at a time. You don't want to basically, you know, put it up here, all the way up here, and then shave off big chunks at a time because then it'll fall down really hard. So I'm running a little bit of ice machine cleaner for this guy real quick. I just put some in there just because it was pretty scaled up. Just before I did anything else. And while I'm waiting for that to finish up, I'm gonna run a leak detector across this uh, compressor right now. Just because it looks like it could be leaking maybe. Zero out. Try it again. Give it one more shot. Yep, it's leaking underneath the compressor. If you need to drain these things on the quick, if the bin is completely empty, like in my case, and I want to drain out all the cleaner, just pull off the pump hose, hold it very carefully, make sure all the clamps are on, and then turn the pump on pump out all the water. You don't want to let it cavitate for too long and run out of water, but that's the quickest way to pump these things out with the water. So once I've drained all the water out, I filled it back up with hot water again. Be careful, I didn't put this clamp back on so you don't want it to pop off and blow you in the face, so you gotta be ready for that. 
but I'm gonna go ahead and turn the pump back on, circulate it, and then drain it again. So we're just getting the hot water running through the machine. We're just rinsing out any cleaner. Go ahead and go to your cleaning valve and open it back up again. We're just giving the machine a, a good rinse. We'll do this one more time after this. And then we'll run a sanitizer through it. And then we'll be ready to make ice. Okay, we're all clean now. So now what we're gonna do, because when I first walked up, I saw that water pump or that water filter went down into the red when the machine was filling. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to time this. This is a five gallon sump on this particular model. You have to pay attention to your model, okay? But this one has a five gallon sump. So I'm gonna start my stopwatch. And the moment that the water overflows through that overflow down there and it starts coming out the drain is when we've hit that five gallons. So by me timing it, I'm able to see the gallons per minute at which this machine is filling. Okay, so I'm gonna start that right now and I'll show you guys the results. Okay, so we're gonna flip this on. And the moment that this water valve turns on, we're gonna start our stopwatch. There we go. I'm gonna start on the stopwatch. I'm just up there. The black needle is pegging in the red. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep timing it until water comes out that one that's dripping right now. So as soon as it starts coming out of that, we know we're at the five gallon mark. That's it. There's our time. So now we can do the math. It's actually 250 because I pushed the wrong button. Okay, so I turn the machine on. Currently it starts out in a harvest. Until this thermistor senses a certain temperature, then a timer happens inside the board. It is turned on right now into the freeze cycle. So when it goes out of hot gas defrost and the water pump turns on, that's the freeze cycle. We're gonna hit start on our stopwatch. We're gonna wait until the five minute mark, then we're gonna record the pressures. Hoshizaki publishes the refrigerant pressures at five minutes into the freeze cycle. So that's what we're waiting for, the five minute mark. Once it hits the five minute mark, we're gonna to go to this book and follow all the data. So we'll take the pressures, you'll look at the water temp, the air temp, and then you know follow it down. Okay, so we're at the five minute mark. Let's go ahead and go over and see all the pressures. Wait for it to connect. 56 and 222, so we'll write that down. Here's a little trick I like to show people if you're having a hard time with an expansion valve or you're worried about an expansion valve, do a temperature comparison. Look at my uh, two temperature clamps. You wanna put them approximately in about the same place. Both those TXVs have the same load on them, essentially, so. So uh, yeah, you should be able to clamp those and your temperature should be within a degree or so of each other. It's pretty good, I don't see a problem with that. So I'm just confirming the TXVs are working properly. So, our flow rate, we're working with a KM1340 MRH, so that's this one right here, KM1340. So we need 2.11 gallons per minute. And I calculated us at five gallons divided by 2.51 equals 1.99 gallons per minute. That doesn't sound bad. I'm not gonna fault it just for that. So, we'll see. We're gonna keep checking everything else out. Refrigerant pressures were a little funky on the low pressure side. They were a little high, but the head pressure was in line. That's why I was checking those expansion valves to see if I was flooding. No, everything's looking good so far. So we just cycled into a harvest and I pushed lap. So that's my freeze time. Now we're going to keep letting it count though because we want to get the harvest time too to get our total cycle time. And that will allow us to fill this out. At the same time, I'm catching all the ice cubes. That way I can weigh them and do a production test. That's where I can catch everything. To be able to find out exactly how much ice this machine is producing. So the harvest time ends when the water pump turns back on. So we're just going to wait. So what's happening here, we're currently waiting for the water pump to turn back on to end the harvest or to signal that the harvest had ended. But what's actually happening is the, um, 
the machine is filling or you know feeding hot gas and that hot gas valve right back there into this evaporator and then it's monitoring the temperature on these out on one of these outlet lines with this orange thermistor right here. And once that thermistor sensed it, then it knew it was time to end the harvest and we're gonna go ahead and hit lap and then stop. So we had a 31 minute free cycle and a 3.4 minute harvest. So now we're checking the production. So this is my total batch weight, including the pan that I caught it all in. 30 pounds, eight ounces. So now we're gonna dump the ice out and then reweigh the pan so that way we know exactly how much ice we used. Okay, so now we weigh the pan empty. And then we subtract the two and that's our total batch weight. Okay, so in the book it tells you how to do a production check, but essentially you're going to take your total cycle time, 34 minutes, that's the harvest plus the freeze, okay? You're going to take 1440, that's the total minutes in a day. You're going to divide that by 34, which is the total time it took to make your cycle. So that equals out to be 42 cycles per day. Then you're going to take your batch weight. 27 pounds times the 42 cycles per day and I come out with this machine is right now producing 1143 pounds per day and it is a 1340 pound machine so that's 1100 pounds in 24 hours and it's rated at 1340 it doesn't sound horrible but we do know that this machine is low on charge okay so so far this is the production check that's the water check the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the bin thermostat to see if that's working properly. So I'll show you guys that. All right, so we're going to do a production, I mean a uh, bin thermostat test. So this is our bin thermostat right here. Okay, and essentially we're going to take ice and we're going to put it up on the bin thermostat. And we're going to time how long it takes to turn the machine on and off. Okay, I'm essentially going through Hoshizaki's freeze up checklist and I'll show you guys that. I'm just doing it in my head steps but so we're gonna test that right now so to test that we're gonna put the moon uh, the unit into a wash cycle so just the water pump is ready let's go ahead and do that okay water pump is running and you're gonna grab a scoop of ice just like that I ignore the first time so ignore the first cycle and then watch it from that point forward. So we're going to wait for it to shut off and then we'll time it from there. Okay, so we just shut off right now. So now what you do is you time with your warm hand. It took three seconds to turn on. Seconds. That's not good. Okay, so this was a service call on a Hoshizaki ice machine that was not working properly. Uh, when I arrived, I found that the right side ice machine was actually off on a safety limit. Okay, on the Hoshizaki ice machines, they have an audible safety limit. This one was off on a two beep safety. Um, what I did was I went through the machine and I just, you know, went through it with a fine tooth comb and uh, found out that the machine was actually frozen up. That was the first thing. Um, once it was frozen up, uh, we just basically go through a checklist that Hoshizaki gives you called a freeze up checklist. Okay. Uh, I kind of know everything in my head, but if you guys don't know what that freeze up checklist includes, what you want to do is open up your Hoshizaki book and in the, um, the, the front of it, it'll tell you, you know, a freeze up checklist, this page, and then just go through the items one by one. Okay. So I just kind of did like a cliff notes version for you guys, just kind of shortened it down. But essentially, we did a water flow test, okay? We tested the gallons per minute, how long it took the machine to fill up with water. Uh, we did a production test on the machine. We did a bin thermostat test on the machine. Uh, also found that the compressor was really rusted out and leaking on the bottom, so we did a leak check on it. Um, and, you know, we just went through everything, okay? Uh, I give some tips in here on how to, you know, defrost the machines and my method, what the fastest way I think is. That's not necessarily the only way to defrost these machines. Other people have their ways and they work just fine. Okay. This is just the way that I like to do it. Um, important one though, is to, is to note that water, uh, water test. Okay. To see how, what the gallons per minute of water flow is coming into that machine, because the gallons per minute really is important when that machine is operating properly. 
Now, I don't know if you guys caught it, but another thing to always pay attention to is the size of the water lines coming into the machine. You'll start to notice a trend that a lot of people do not follow what the manufacturers say. If you open up the Hoshizaki book, they will actually tell you what they recommend for water line sizes coming into that machine. Uh, being that that was a 1,300 pound machine, I off the top of my head, I don't think I know it was a 3 8 water inlet. And a 3 8 I don't think is big enough for a 1,300 pound machine. Okay, So that will also affect the, the, the water flow coming into the machine. But also, like you guys saw too, um, their water filters were actually getting pretty dirty too. So I told the customer to go ahead and have, they use Ecolab to, uh, to change their water filters. So I told them to go ahead and have them come out there and replace the water filters too. Now, uh, I went through like a whole checklist because I always look at the big picture, like I always say, okay. Uh, but this customer, after I reported everything to them, they actually decided to replace the entire machine. They do not want to repair it. They're going to go back in there. They're actually going to replace both of their ice machines and put two brand new machines in there on one bin, okay, and eliminate... They really do have a bad setup because that location is located out in the desert and one of those machines is a remote and then one of them is self-contained and it's just hideously hot in front of that ice machine and it's winter time right now. But it's because of the self-contained machine. It's just recircing the heat and it's just kind of silly. So we're going to get two uh, more than likely Manitowoc um, quiet cube machines in there that'll be remote, remoted onto the roof and Everything will be good after that, okay? So, um, you know, thanks again, guys, for taking the time to watch this video. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, popping up right now is some other channels that I recommend you guys check out. And other than that, I will see you guys on the next one, okay? Thanks a lot.